Hey, welcome to Unit 7, a final unit in our Android application class. We're going to be working here with online data storage with our phone. So online data storage is going to come in two different parts. We're going to work with a library called Volley. And Volley is able to get services that are free, known as APIs. So here's an example of an API. So suppose there's a database out there that allows applications like ours to do queries on their data and to say give me all the employees of your store or of your game or whatever it is and you can see that the data that they're going to provide us is in the JSON format now the library called Volley will take that JSON formatted data and translate it into objects that we can use in our list and so you can see this example is a API service providing user names now the second type of data that we're going to be using online is called Firestore. So Firestore is a service that is unique to Google. So Firestore is a NoSQL database. Looks, this is what it looks like. You're going to have this web page interface that says, I have a list of things that I'm storing, such as contacts. The uh, funny column of letters in the middle is the ID number of each contact. And then you can see on the right side that each contact has multiple properties. And so these properties correspond roughly to what you would expect to see in any database where you have field names. And so the unique part about this type of database is that it is a non-SQL database, a NoSQL database. You will not have any SQL select statements in here, but you'll have something similar. And so we'll be able to store data online. And as long as your phone is connected to the internet, this will be a service that your phone will know about. The nice thing about these NoSQL uh, Firestore applications is that the data updates are immediate and automatic. For instance, in your program, if you have a list of contacts and somebody adds a contact to the database, your app will automatically refresh and you'll have that new contact in the list. And so it's instant update. This works great for things like chats and games. So these are two different popular technologies that are used not only in Android, but in other types of applications. Now, we're going to create a challenge then in this unit. We're going to take the geocache program that we made in the last unit, the game where you follow the map points, and then we're going to translate this into an online version. And so that way, when you save a game, you can share it with other users. And when a user is done playing the game and it registers their high score, it doesn't just save that score locally on the phone, it will save it in the global database so that all users of the geocache program will be able to see what, the, what you're doing. So the, just think of like the, the Strava app where users are comparing each other's scores on routes that they've ridden or run. Uh, your geocache program will be kind of like a Strava clone, we'll call it, with much less features, of course, because... Uh, we're doing this as an introduction class instead of a professional app. But that's the idea. So, welcome to Unit 7, Online Storage. Let's get started in the next video.